I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Village President and Board of Trustees for the Village of Burr Ridge. It's November 24, 2014, 7 p.m. At this time, we are uh, privileged to have Maura Fitzgerald, a fifth grader in Elm School, lead us in the pledge. Maura's favorite subject in school is math. She's in the school choir. Out of school, she spends as many of her waking moments as possible swimming. She is currently swimming for the Hinsdale Swim Club. She's very dedicated to her sport, and her father tells us she's very good at it. She has one sister, Amelia, and her mom and dad, Julie and Richard. Mara, lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice and loud. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Roll call. Trustee Francis. Here. Trustee Grasso. Here. Trustee Paveza. Here. Trustee Bolas. Here. Trustee Ruzak. Trustee Maneri. Mayor Straub. Uh, audience, at this time, we allow anybody in the audience that wishes to address the board time. Uh, we ask that they keep their uh, comments under five minutes. Is there anybody uh, in the audience that wishes to address the board? Yes. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Dolores Cesar, former trustee, now living in the Grange. And since practically the whole agenda is on the consent agenda, I hope that I will have more than five minutes. And I hope you'll pay attention to what I'm saying and not watching the timer. I'd like to talk primarily about funding the police pension. According to the Burridge Annual Treasurer's Report for the year ending April 30th, 2011 and April 30th, 2014, the number of police retirees increased from 12 to 4. I mean, from 12 to 16, which is an increase of four people. The police pension payouts in 2011 were a little under 500,000. The police payouts in 2014 were almost 800,000, which is an increase of 293,000, or almost 59%. As I understand it, Mr. Stricker claims that the municipal contributions for the police pension fund does not need to kick in for the full amount for a 29-year-old new hire when he, she won't retire for 30 to 35 years. But the new hire is paying his, her share to the fund. So why isn't the municipality? FICA makes deductions based on income, not age. As you probably know, the pension reform bill passed in December of last year by the General Assembly was recently ruled unconstitutional because of the clause in the 1970 Illinois Constitution prohibiting any changes in the contract. There will be no pension reform, in my opinion, until the state constitution is amended. And though the changes proposed by the DuPage Mayor's Manager Conference are reasonable, it is fantasy land to think that those changes will pass muster without amending the state constitution. Put another way, some cha such changes have a snowball chance in hell. It is indeed very troubling that the leadership of this village and some trustees simply do not grasp the fact 
that Illinois and many municipalities are in deep doo-doo because the police pension fund has been underfunded for years. I wonder if you know that the salary of a U.S. congressperson is 174000 Stricker manages a village of only 11,000 residents, but has a salary over 174000 and whines that he only has $500 a month car maintenance and not a car. While I'm on the subject of salaries, did you know that members of the DuPage County Board think Gary Grasso are paid 50000 for a part-time job, almost $1,000 a week? I wish I could find a gig like that. Now, I'd like to talk a moment about necessities. Was an electronic bulletin board outside the village hall a necessity? Was half a million spent on renovating the village hall a necessity? Is the yellow brick road, which is what I call the overpass bridge, a necessity? Was half a million dollars that were spent on the beautification between 77th and 79th Street, this was before any hotel motel tax, half million dollars, was that a necessity? And I don't know how many times it's been redone since then, but quite a few times. The point being, this village spends a lot of money on things that are not necessities. And the $200,000 that Mr. White was talking about could have been compromised. Some of it paid this year, some of it paid next year, but the point is, we would be catching up so that we would be, not be in the position that so many municipalities are presently in. Thank you. And at the end of the meeting, I'll give each of you a copy of this statement. Thank you. Is there anyone else? My name is Tom White. I'm the former um, police pension fund trustee. I have uh, one uh, statement to make and then a, an observation. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the village stewards for the six plus years that allowed, they allowed me to serve on the police pension board. <clears throat> I am proud of what the fund accomplished during that period. I trust that you will allow me to take a few moments of your time minimally in recognition of my service to make a brief prepared statement also a reflection. <clears throat> Regardless of the village administration's attack of me in our presentation, I stand by the data and observations that were made as being authentic, accurate, and truthful in every respect, with one possible exception related to the exact amount of the statutory underfunding for which the village has not provided me data for comparison or validation. The numerical data that the fund reported in our presentation came directly from the current actuarial valuations, from trend information derived from previous actuarial valuations, or official correspondence with the Illinois Department of Insurance, which is the state agency charged with our oversight. My reflection is history revisited. Illinois in 1993, in order to provide relief from escalating municipal police and fire funding, instituted a 40-year ramp funding program. By 2008, only 15 years in, municipalities clamored for relief. It's my understanding that in 2010, Burridge, the Burridge fiscal year brought considerable, considerable budgetary stress including layoffs, which I would assume meant far-reaching cutbacks in services provided by the village. The state helped the village weather the storm <clears throat> by replacing pension sweeteners with lemons for new hires. This provided the rationale to restart yet another ramp funding plan. The village minimized the 2010 budgetary pain by lev levying at less than the required police pension contribution. It would appear that 2010 is a distant memory, a hiccup in the village's financial history. 
In three short years, we have seen the new ramp funding plan significantly escalate the required pension contribution beyond its 2011 projections. This in spite of the fact that the financial markets have been fair, favorable during that time. <clears throat> By 2025, if not sooner, approximately 15 years into the 30-year program, municipalities will once again be faced, pardon me, will once again be lobbying for relief, but things will be decidedly different. Number one, municipalities will not be able to short municipal, municipal pension funding. Delinquent funding will be an offset to any state grant the village might otherwise receive. Number two, pension reform will be significantly restricted since the benefits for, two -tier, officer, for tier two officers, those hired after 2011, are already minimal. Just like last Friday, the circuit court upheld the Illinois Constitution non-diminishment clause it is, as it applies to tier two public pensions. This new <clears throat> replacement, oh, I'm sorry, thus new replacement state ramp funding could be, sever could be severely restricted in its scope. Now I'd like to quote Winston Churchill. <clears throat> when the situation was man manageable, it was neglected. And now that it is thoroughly out of hand, we apply too late the remedies which might then have affected a cure. Want of foresight, unwillingness to act when action would be simple and effective, lack of clear thinking, confusion of counsel until the emergency comes, <clears throat> until self-preservation strikes its jarring gong. These are, the features which, these are the features which constitute the endless repetition of history. I've got copies for you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mike, thank yep. you for your six plus years of service to the village and your volunteerism. Sure. Appreciate it deeply. Your thorough knowledge and your support. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. I'd like to concur. I'd like to concur with that, Tom. And, I, and I'd also like to say, I think Mayor Mickey Straub and Steve Stricker owe you an apology. Didn't know Mickey wasn't going to be here tonight, but you are owed an apology. Good for you, Diane. I agree with that. Uh, John Bittner, Two Hidden Lake Drive. Uh, I was here two weeks ago. Albert, I wish you were here, uh, but you couldn't until it happens. But I gave some numbers to my accounts, and I'm going to just share some things. My family owns seven corporations, which I started, which I don't own anymore, because I pass them on to my kids. Out of those seven corporations, they're all in Illinois. Five are no longer here. They're in different states. Two are still here, and they'll be gone in probably the next two years, because my son had enough of this state and what's going on here. But something was said, Steve, the Village Police Pension Fund has $5.7 in unfunded liability, projected to grow to $8 million by 2030, but shrink to $4.9 million in 2040. I gave that to my accountants, and I talked to them about this thing, and they went, that's impossible to project that because of variations and deviations in what's going on in funding in this state and what's happening. Madigan, down in the state, is talking about trying to transfer the debt on the school funding to each one of the localities in the state. That would double your home taxes, double them. It can't happen. It won't happen because that would destroy the state. People would go out of their minds. But this is on the table. It's not going to happen. But you cannot forecast to 2040 what's going to happen not knowing the liability of what's going to happen in the economy, Steve. You can't do it. And I will say to you, if you believe that, would you bet your, your retirement fund on it? Personally, put some cash into the table. Would you say that's going to happen and bet your retirement on it? I have to ask you. It's the state law, Mr. Bittner. Wait, wait, state law. It, this it's, is the the, it's the state law, Mr. Bittner. It's what the 88.5% of the residents of this village demanded back in 2010. Steve, I, I have, appreciate I have, there's that. Nothing, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just telling you the facts. Well, that's a wonderful thing, and I'll give you a fact. This is the worst state in the United States for debt. State law? You're going to follow somebody who's losing? You don't follow the guidelines of people that are not doing it properly. It doesn't work. 
This does not work. I wouldn't bet my life on it. I wouldn't bet $1,000 on this thing to happen. 2040, I don't have a crystal ball. We have a problem here. Mr. White, you're absolutely right. My accounts think you were absolutely right in what you did. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Next is a consent agenda, omnibus vote. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda. Five would be minutes. A, receive and file draft stormwater committee meeting of November 11, 2014. B, receive and file draft pathway commission meeting of November 13, 2014. C, receive and file draft plan commission meeting of November 17, 2014. Ordinances. A, Removal of an ordinance, approval of an ordinance granting a conditional sign approval as per the Village of Burr Ridge sign ordinance for approval of a subdivision entry sign, S07-2014 Garywood Drive, Burr Ridge Meadows Subdivision. B, approval of an ordinance authorizing the sale of, by public auction of property owned by the Village of Burr Ridge. There are no resolutions. Eight considerations. B, approval of recommendation to ratify emergency purchase of water division replacement interrogator. Interrogator. Pardon? Interrogator. Interrogator, excuse me. Uh, C, approval of recommendation to authorize purchase of replacement vehicle number 37, Department of Public Works plow truck. D, approval of request for tuition reimbursement for police officer Megan Smith. E, approval of proclamation designing de designating December 2014 as National Drunk and Drug Driving Prevention Month. F, approval of vendor list in the amount of $860,016.83 for all funds plus $247,703.30 for payroll for a grand total of $1,107,720.13, which includes special expenditures of $17,935.29 to Homer Tree Care for tree removal. That was 78 of them. $31,411.17 to Homer Tree Care for EAB tree removal, 138 of those. $470,000 uh, to U.S. Bank for Geo Series 20,000 principal, $22,707.50 to U.S. Bank for Geo Series 2003 interest and $51,931.25 to U.S. Bank for Debt Certificate Series 2012 interest. At this, at this time, I'd like a, a, a recommendation to approve minutes 5A, B, and C, ordinances 6A and B, considerations A, B, C, D, and E, and F. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Trustee Grasso. Yes. Trustee Bolas. Yes. Trustee Beveza. Yes. Trustee Francis. Yes. Four zero. Okay. Okay. Minutes are uh, minutes are, uh, approved. Um, next item is on, under eight consideration. Consideration of recommendation mm -hmm. to award contract for landscape services to two TLC Group Incorporated. Good evening. 
The item before you for consideration this evening is the village's multi-year contract for landscape maintenance. Uh, this has previously been uh, comprised of a number of different contracts, a contract for maintenance of the village's gateways and the medians and the four, what we call the four corners area in the county line corridor, uh, maintenance of the uh, county line road corridor south of 79th Street for mowing of the right of way adjacent to the sidewalk and then maintenance of the village um, municipal campus, which is the police station and the uh, village hall. Uh, last year, the, during the budget cycle, the board directed us to aggregate those contracts. Um, despite the fact that they are paid for out of three funds currently, uh, the pathway fund pays for the mowing along the sidewalk uh, historically. The general fund pays for the municipal campus and the hotel motel fund pays for the remainder, which is all of the village's gateways the medians, the four corners, what we call a four corners area here at the Burr Ridge Parkway and uh, County Line Road, and the Cloverleaf area as well. Uh, that was a good suggestion. The aggregating of the contracts this year does indicate that we have the potential to uh, not only contain costs, but actually to have a year to year reduction, even with the inclusion of the additional plantings along County Line Road and I-55. Uh, I've submitted a, a spreadsheet for your attention, which indicates the 2014 prices on the far right. Last year, the contracts were aggregated among two contractors. Landworks was the uh, primary contractor taking care of the municipal campus and the, uh, the gateways, and Royal Oak was the contractor doing the mowing along County Line Road. The total cost for that work last year was uh, 63387 uh, This year, we did go out for bid with, with an aggregated contract. We received four bids from Acres Group, Landworks Incorporated, Premier Landscape, and the TLC Group. The lowest bid of those four, uh, which were received, is from TLC Group in the amount of uh, 58,693. There's a, there's a one year reduction in cost. There's a discount in cost because the I-55 County Line Road Bridge plantings will be under warranty for one year. So the first year of the contract is at a reduced cost after a $5,142 reduction, uh, the year one cost would be $53,551. Years two and three would be $58,693. So uh, all three of those years, a reduction to the current year, 2014 prices. Uh, we have worked with TLC contractors before. They were our, our contractor from 2009 to 2011. We've also checked the references and found that they are adequate. Um, however, since this item has been placed on the agenda, there has been some questions raised about the solvency of the, co uh, the company. Um, they did submit the compliance affidavits, uh, which are required with the submittal, as well as a performance bond. They also, um, the reference checks, uh, which were municipal references, the village of Darien, Lyle, and Oakbrook Terrace, were satisfactory, indicating that the contractor is currently doing work. Um, at this point, we uh, also have found that uh, they are doing business as TLC Group, but their incorporated name is actually um, on the green incorporated. So we would uh, like, if this is approved tonight, <clears throat> to have it approved contingent upon the village receiving satisfactory documentation that, in fact, the contractor is solvent and able to perform the work so that we can ensure that uh, moving forward, the village will be served appropriately by this contract. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, Paul, if there's a question on uh, the solvency of this group, is there a possibility that even if we approve the amount, uh, how do you pay them? Monthly? Uh, you don't pay payment, them all. Payment is always rendered after the service is offered. Uh, so we, we, have a few, we have a few sureties. One, uh, performance bond is required. Uh, for the contract and that provides us with an instrument through which we can pay any vendors disclose any liens and so forth if a contractor is for any reason to become insolvent during the course of the contract and this is a three-year contract secondly we offer service we offer payment only after service is rendered usually 30 to 60 days after so um, if plants are installed the plants are installed and then after we receive the invoice from the contractor, we pay that, that's usually a 30 to 60 day, day lag. Um, but the contractor also makes orders of materials and supplies in advance. Uh, and I wanna make sure that they have a standing in the, in the business community that they're able to place those orders 
and acquire the goods and that they have a uh, credit worthy status and that they can place the orders, get plants growing. Plants are typically ordered in the middle of the, of the winter. They're growing in greenhouses and then they're available in the spring. So I w this is something that's come up after this uh, has been placed on the agenda. And we would just like the opportunity to confirm uh, before we ink is on paper that in fact the contractor can carry out the work. And the warranty for the plants, would that be from TLC or from the grower of the plant? The warranty, yeah, in this case there's, there's a discount for year one for the I-55 County Line Road corridor plants. That is a warrant, warranty by the contractor. In the case of plants that are installed uh, by TLC, there's usually a, a warranty that's offered by both parties uh, is so, so long as we have adequate documentation. Annuals, of course, have a very short warranty, but perennial, any plants that, that were installed as perennials would have a one-year warranty. Thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stricker, could you pull up the spreadsheet that uh, Mr. May is referring to? Uh, it's in the package. It's on page 25 of the... I know that. I, I, know, I know where it is. I just want it pulled up so he, the audience can follow along with the numbers that he read and the, those at home can follow along with the numbers that he read. You don't have it? I can walk through the numbers if you have a question. No. I'm asking for, for the audience's benefit. In the future, Mr. Stricker, would you please make sure that these numbers are available on spreadsheets so that the audience can follow along and those at home can follow along as well? Thank you. Hello. Irrigation costs, those are in addition to any of these uh, costs that we see here, right? These, um, the irrigation costs of any repairs that would be necessary would be on a TNM basis. Uh, there are costs occasionally associated with damage to uh, pipe bursting or so forth. If the, if the contractor is responsible for that, in other words, if they damage the irrigation system, installing plants or maintaining the plants, then that is their obligation to repair at their cost. Okay. If there's a cost associated with the infrastructure, the controller cabinet failing or there being some other failure that occurs, that, is, uh, that would be on a TNM basis and that would be done, by our, uh, done separately, yes. You said there's a performance bond. How much is the performance bond? Performance bond is for 100% of the one-year price. And it's cash or? It's usually provided by a bonding agency. Bond. Oh, a bond, okay. Um, is there any irrigation to the plantings in the bridge? The bridge will not have plantings. The plantings at the bridge are have been identified based on feedback from the board previously to be as robust as possible. There's no annuals there. There's no flowering plants. The plants that are there are native and woody plants exclusively. Uh, so that is an, not an irrigated uh, location. There's no irrigation provided it for okay. that. In, in the um, option bid three, it says um, actual labor cost plus 30%. Do you know what labor costs are there hourly is? Because it's not prevailing wage, right? Right. Now, these, these uh, and that's a question that we get occasionally, which is could this be work that the village could hire a number of staff and perform? Right now, the tipping point is probably pr the fact that this uh, prevailing wage does not apply to landscape maintenance work. Um, and so we do realize a savings using using contractors for this work because most of the landscape contractors are not paid anywhere near what would be prevailing wage. If at some point, and there is always a lobby to do this, if at some point the landscape maintenance work were required to be paid at prevailing wage, that certainly would tip uh, the scale back and it would maybe at that point be cost effective or for the village to consider doing it in-house and we would do the metrics at that point. Uh, I think you had a question about did I answer your question? Yeah, uh, just, you don't know what their hourly label, labor costs are. We have a, yeah, it's, it varies based on the position. And we do have a labor schedule. I don't have that with me for That's all right. the contractors that were submitted with the bid. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Yes. Uh, one more question. Could you explain the scope of the work uh, for the maintenance between 79th Street and 91st Street along County Line Road? Yes, the maintenance along County Land Road uh, was necessitated by construction of the sidewalk at that location. Uh, those that were here at that point realized the condition of the uh, parkway change. There's a ditch installed there. Uh, when the sidewalk was installed, the ditch was regraded. And at that time, many homeowners neglected or elected, I should say, elected not to maintain the right-of-way. 
Uh, so following that period of time, the village has hired a contractor to maintain the areas along County Line Road between the sidewalk and the, and the roadway pavement, which, is not, which are not maintained by the homeowners. And a lot of that is difficult to maintain and it requires line trimming, spring trimming. So uh, not all of the homeowners are maintaining it, uh, but most are? I would say not most. I would say somewhat less than half probably are maintaining. Okay, and this money comes out of the pathway fund? It has historically come from the pathway fund. It's over $3,000? Last year was uh, $3,290. Has there any, have any attempts been made to encourage the homeowners to, to maintain this property? We have. Uh, it, on occasion, a homeowner will call up and, and notify us that they're not going to maintain it anymore. Sometimes we have a new homeowner that moves in and does maintain it. We've also reached out to homeowners, not just in this location, but in other areas throughout town. There's a number, quite a number of locations where um, the right-of-way is maintained by the village. And we do what we can to encourage the residents in right. those cases to do so. But I would say the vast majority of the, home, the resident property owners in the village Across. maintain the parkways that are associated with, with their lots. Across correct? the village as a yes. whole, absolutely. Right, the vast, but, vast but majority. On County Line Road, I mean, there's always a history that people didn't maintain that, that right of way. It's county right of way. In a lot of cases, it's, it's people are backing up to that area. And, and um, so for years, it was kind of left natural. Uh, but then when you put in the sidewalk, you know, you're kind of expecting a different look. Um, and, and then some people, some people did maintain that with their landscaper and, and others did not, and that's where we made the compromise. Remember, was putting in that sidewalk on County Line Road was extremely con uh, controversial at the time, and I think there was, you know, feeling that, you know, if residents hadn't been doing it before, we shouldn't force them to do it now, and we went ahead and, and took care of that. And obviously, we used the whole time, I mean, the uh, pathway money for for that purpose. I just have a concern about diminishing the pathway fund uh, for this maintenance when we, when the maintenance that the pathway fund should, funds should be used for is maintaining the pathways and, and not the parkway between the curb and, and, the, and the sidewalk itself. Thank you. Maybe there's a way we can uh, fund that pathway fund if they're going to do this every year? Well, it probably should come out of the general fund then if it's not going to come out of the pathway fund. Um, but that's a decision you can make during the budget process. The thing I looked at is finding out who was paying for what portion of it rather than all of it just coming out of one fund. It was a little, little more complicated. You had to really read through it to find out, you know, what, of course, what department is being paid That's for. been going on for years, obviously. Yeah, well, that we've but been, it's, we've it's a lot easier that. when it's coming up for approval to have that all in front of you. Uh, oh, is I there agree. any other questions? How much, not, um, uh, how much time do you need to do your due diligence on the company and well a lot of that will do depend on their response time so okay. i need to get from them their compliance certificates we have a number of those i want to reconfirm with those that they are in fact in order they appear to be in order um, we also need them to provide a, a contract bond i would like to contact the vendors that have that are listed um, to make sure that they have a uh, relationship that's credit worthy and they can buy things on our behalf i get a if you can a financial statement from the company as well as maybe a visual verification of the equipment At this time, uh, I'd like to uh, have a motion uh, to approve the contract for landscape services uh, in the amount of uh, $53,551.25 for 2015, uh, $58,693.25 for 2016, and 2017 plus as needed supplemental services in accordance with the contractor label and material schedule. Contingent. Contingent on, yeah. Pardon? Contingent on satisfactory uh, right. uh, completion of the uh, of their, documentation. Uh, yeah, documentation and completion of uh, verification of the solvency of the company. So you're making a motion? I am. <laughs> Second. 
There's been a motion and second. Could I have a roll call? Trustee Yes. Trustee Bolas. Yes. Trustee Francis. Yes. Trustee Grasso. Yes. Trustee Pitt. Uh, yes. Motion approved. Other considerations for announcement, deliberation, or discussion only. No official action will be taken. Uh, again, a uh, portion uh, for the audience, if there's anybody that uh, wants to address the board now that didn't do it before. Yes, Dolores. <clears throat> it is my, <clears throat> my understanding that the person who was recommended by the village president at the last board meeting without authorization from the trustees <clears throat> has withdrawn consideration. If that is true, I would like to make the suggestion I think this board, the police pension board, is very important. And rather than relying on the recommendation of one person, I think that the candidates should be vetted by the entire board. Thank you. Anyone else? A report and communication from village officials? Yes. I'd like to thank everyone for volunteering for the Jingle Mingle. I think it was a wonderful success. Hopefully many of you were there. Uh, and I'd also like to specifically, well, first of all, I have to thank Janet Kowal, who I don't know, the, the, the village runs a lot very smoothly, I think, with her help. Um, and I also want to thank our sponsors, Global Luxury Motors, uh, Imports, the Whole Foods Market, Patty's Sunrise Cafe, Mars Chocolate, and TLC Chiropractic. Um, we need their support. We thank them for their support. And thank you all. Yes. I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, if there's no other business before the board, uh, I'd like a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>